we're speaking about seeking Jesus for a big calling. Don't you want a big calling in your life? <laughs> Don't you want a bigger calling in your life? Yes. And our, fi- our verse is found on Joshua 1, verse 1 to 18. But you can read it at home. Please go read it at home. You will see God gives Joshua a very big calling. And I want you today to also grasp that the, the fact that God also has a big calling upon your life. Hey, can everyone say big calling? big calling? Ah, we have a big calling upon our lives. First of all, we must find out who gives us this calling. The name Joshua means Savior. Yeah. Hey, we just sang it now, my Savior, my Jesus. This book is all about the complete salvation in Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ gives you a big calling and he saves you from a small calling of this world. Yeah? Think about it. Because the world's calling is small. <laughs> Satan offers you small things. Even if it looks big, it's still small because it's taking you to hell. But Jesus Christ gives you an eternal calling to spend eternity with Christ. Yeah? Aren't you excited for that? Yeah. Uh, it's exciting, man. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. So as you read this book, I'm just giving you the few verses just to introduce this message. Is that, you know, if you know, <laughs> if you know that Jesus Christ has saved you, you will read this book with joy in, a, in your heart by knowing that once I was lost, once I was living in the darkness, Eh? Once I was living in this world, not loving God. Have, is, have someone been there? Yeah. Eh? Living in the world? Yeah. Eh? Walking around in the street, drunk, you know, being controlled by money, all those things. You know, we have been, we've been saved from those things. But today, we have a Jesus that he gives us a big Hallelujah. calling upon our lives. Eh? Isn't that beautiful? This book says, you know, when God opens this book, he tells Mo, uh, Joshua that Joshua, Moses is dead. So therefore now it's your time. <laughs> I'm giving you the big calling now. Go into the Canaan, into the promised land. Take these people with you. You see, but I'm telling you today, Moses is dead, but Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Uh, think about it. Isn't this beautiful? Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Let me show you more. Let me show you more. For this man was counted worth more glory than Moses. Hebrews 3.3. 3. You see that, church, that this calling is found in Jesus Christ, in him who is so glorious that when Moses saw him at the burning bush, he could not look at him. This calling is so big, people. It's not from a man. It's not from a job. It's not from a company. It's a calling from the king of kings that is glorious. Come, think about it. Think about it, church. This is so big. And he, he tells him, as I introduce, he tells him, now therefore go, you and all these people, unto the land which I do give them. Think about that. God doesn't offer him something small. He offers him a land, <laughs> eh? a country. Think about it. He says, go. <laughs> eh? Old Testament, there's also a great commission. Every big calling comes with a great commission. Yeah. If you want a big calling, God will send you. <laughs> I know uh, in our families when we are young, we didn't like to be sent. You know parents, eh? they send you three times to the same place or the same, I mean, the same time. Eh? They send you, go back, buy chips. You come back, they say, oh, we forgot, go buy cold drink. You know that, we don't like being sent, you know that. But God sends you for a great calling. Eh? God can send you for one person to one person the whole week. Imagine, <laughs> what would you say? Um, oh, no, God, I'm tired. No, can't be tired. He calls us for a great commission. Amen. The other thing is that, think about this now. We get into the three points. There's three points that I want you to take home. But before that, I want you to grasp the big calling. Look at, look at that map. I don't know if you like, those who don't like geography, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, this is, God gives these people land. Look at that. They are on this side of the Jordan. And God says they must now go over to the other side of the Jordan. And the land is so big. 
Think about that. So they're crossing, and they didn't just cross a river. You know, sometimes you just see water running next to the tar road. You think that's a river? No, it didn't just call them for a small river. The river was overflowing. Yeah. Eh? It was overflowing. No one could just pass there. And it was not just overflowing. It was overflowing with speed. No man, human thinking and human speaking, could pass that river. No man. You must read that Bible. And then I, I, again, God says, you must go cross over that river. And it was not just five people. You see, here, we don't even become half of the number of the people that had to cross that river. 40,000 people had to cross first. Then millions of people had to... You, do you imagine that big calling that was on Joshua's life? And God wants to give it to you. <laughs> huh? With a great number of people, to a great piece of land. Imagine. God gives us land, people. God gives us Mohale City. God gives us Kauteng. God gives us South Africa. God gives us Africa. Are you ready? Amen. Or you just want to stay at one point? No, God has a big calling upon your life. I'm also giving you feedback of Lesotho. Um, Monday we drove to Lesotho morning. We arrived there in the evening. That's the community where we were. Yeah, it's a small, it's a small area. Um, and then, but there's big land. <laughs> it's small houses, a small area of houses, but there's big land. <laughs> and then we were standing there. And then there's no church. Imagine, imagine people. In that small community, there's no church. Uh, think about it. Just in our block, how many churches are there in our block? Plus minus eight. We were counting the other day. Plus minus eight churches in our block. <laughs> And, uh, and we, everyone has options to go to that church or to that church to that church. But those people don't have an option. <laughs> There's no church. You see what I'm talking about, church. And then there, we went to a clinic there uh, in Lesotho. You know, that clinic is covering almost three to four communities. And there's only six nurses. <laughs> When we entered that clinic there, we, we, we tried to, uh, talking to the people, and the people just looked at us like this because of they don't understand even the Bible. <laughs> you see, church, there are people who don't even have the Bible, and we have an opportunity to preach the gospel to them. And, uh, you know, uh, we, in that community, you know how long must a child go to school walking? One hour. <laughs> five to three kilometers, and that in that community, there's a river that divides them from other communities. So if, they, if it's raining uh, and the, the river is full, the children don't go to school because they can't cross the river. Imagine, church, the big land that God has given to the world that we can go preach the gospel. You see that? God has a big calling upon your life because there's a need out there that needs you to preach the gospel. Who must go preach the gospel? Who must go preach the gospel? <laughs> Amen. You see, irrespective of the big challenges, God says, listen to this, every place where your foot tread upon, that I have given unto you, I said, as I said to Moses. Think about it. The calling is for big challenges. <laughs> if you want a big calling upon your life, you must face big challenges. <laughs> <laughs> All authority has been given unto Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth. So don't just limit yourself to a small place. If God says go bigger, go further, go. That's why I don't, want, I don't like walking one road every day. <laughs> I just want to always go somewhere else because I will know I'll meet someone new <laughs> to preach the gospel to. <laughs> so challenge yourself. Born again to uh, Christian. There are three things that I want you to take home about the big calling. First is the promise of the big calling. There's a promise to the big calling. Secondly, there's the command of the big calling. If you won't obey the command of the big calling, you won't have a big calling upon your life. That means you will reject the calling. And the third part is that the obedience of the big calling. You, you heard the three things? Do you get it? What is the first one? Huh? The, I can't hear people. I can't hear people speaking. What is the first one? It's there on the board. <laughs> God gives you a promise. You will hear that. And the second one, what does it give you? Command. And the third one, huh? Obedience of the big calling. So if you have those three, you, your, the big calling will be activated in your life. 
Number one, the promise that no man shall stand before you. Eh? Even if it's a celebrity, he cannot stand before you because of greater is he who is in you than the celebrity himself. I know people today fear celebrities more than they fear God. No system of this world can stand before you. Amen. You cannot fear the system of the world and give excuses of the system of the world and not obey God. No government can stop the big calling upon your life because it says no man. Who, who made the government of this world? Man! <laughs> There are politicians sitting there. There are government that sits there in the parliament. So they cannot stop the big calling upon your life. Even if they say you are unemployed, they cannot stop the calling upon your life. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? Even if they say you are unemployed, they cannot stop the work of God upon your life. No rich person can stop the calling upon your life. Sometimes we think, we look at our pockets and say, no, because I don't have money, God cannot call me. What scripture is that? Do you know any scripture that says God doesn't call people who, ha who doesn't have money? Huh? Is there any scripture like that? No. no. God, you must read 1 Corinthians. It says God chose the poor to shame the rich. Amen. Come on, church. God wants to choose you, to use you to touch your own family, your own school, your own nation, your own community. He wants to choose you. Don't ever put excuses and say, I don't have money. He wants to use you without money. <laughs> Africans, no sangoma can stop your calling. <laughs> Africans, you know, Africans that are, that are fearing sangomas more than they fear God. Come on, repent of that fear of Sangomas and go fear God rather. Because Sangoma is just a man. Even if they look scary, <laughs> it's just a man. So no man can stand before the big calling upon your life. Amen. You understand what we are saying here? No big, no man. Think of Pharaoh. You remember Pharaoh? Huh? And who had to go to speak to Pharaoh? Moses, a shepherd. He's coming from taking care of the sheep. He knows only the sound of man. Eh? Then he has to go speak to a king. Eh? Imagine that. And he speaks not once. The king says no. He had to go ten times. <laughs> ten times. No man could stop him. Amen. He was empowered by God knowing that he said, go and take my people out of Egypt. You understand? The calling will push you irrespective of who stands before you. I'm waiting for the day, Pastor, where the one president will call us and ask us, how do you do the work in your community? Yeah. I'm waiting for that day. <laughs> Don't you wait for that day. President can call you, people. He must call the church, because the church is the only solution. Amen. He must call us and say, come, help us. That's, why we, that's when we can now say, thank you, glory to God. Because of the people who had big callings in the in the Bible, spoke with kings and influenced them. The promise of the big calling. Let me go further in Jesus Christ. Nothing can stop, nothing could stop Jesus Christ from fulfilling the big calling of dying on the cross. The biggest calling that any man can have had on this earth was Jesus Christ to die for you on the cross. That was the biggest calling and nothing could stop him. Biology could not stop him. He was born from a virgin woman and he died on the cross. Naturally speaking, no man can die and rise again. Have you seen that before? Have you seen that before? Jesus Christ has have, have done it because he is more powerful than death and Satan and sin. Amen. Nothing could stop him. Herod could not find him. You remember, Herod wanted to kill Jesus Christ, but Herod could not find him. No man can stop him. Amen. And he is now in you. Satan could not tempt him. Even Satan, the one you are scared of, Satan could not tempt Jesus Christ who is now in you. You see what we are doing, church? Death! Think about it. Death! Hey, what happens to a dead person? He becomes bones. Worms eat him. But dead could not eat him. Bones, worms, worms could not eat him in the grave. Think about it. He was not a bone. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, people? He was not a bone. He rose from the dead. There's no one in the tomb today. Jesus Christ is alive and he wants to give you a big calling. Come on, church. That's nothing. 
that can stop the calling upon your life that Jesus Christ has placed. No man could silence his disciples. You must read Acts 4, 19, 20. They say, who must we obey? They told the disciples, imagine, they told the disciples, keep quiet. <laughs> Don't preach about Jesus Christ. And they said, who must we obey? Choose whether God or man. Because there's no other name given on heaven, in heaven and on earth, that man could be saved than Jesus Christ. And think about his name. How many names do you know of people, of places? Huh? That, that one uh, from Venda, you see, is a name. <laughs> uh, Mama is there from PE, is a name. You understand? That is Baba Bongani, is a name. But Jesus Christ is above all names that you know. <laughs> Even the names that you don't know, <laughs> he's above all of them. All those names. Huh? Can you think about it, people? That's why Romans 8, listen to Romans 8 as we close this part. Romans 8, 31 says, if God is for us, come on, finish it. Finish it, people, finish it. If God is for us, Come on, who can be against us? Amen. You see, no one can stop the calling, the command of the calling. Three times in the book of Joshua, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Three times. And he gives, that's, that's a command. <laughs> he's not asking him, can you please be strong? <laughs> he's, not telling, he's not saying that. He says, be strong, be be, be, be strong. <laughs> I learned something new about being strong this week at Lesotho. You see that beautiful house there? It was not built by bricks. It was, it was built by rocks. The people take the rocks from the mountain. They don't use machinery. Oh, I was shocked. They don't, they don't use machines. They use a chisel, a hammer. They break the rocks and they build the house faster. I was shocked. The people are strong. No machines, nothing. Eh? Imagine that. Be strong and courageous. Look at, look at how beautiful it is. Eh? With, with rocks, they, they have to carry it themselves. They carry it with wheelbarrows, with hands. They make plans with buckies, but they carry it. They're strong, those people. And they make those beautiful houses with rocks. Be strong. That's why when I looked at it, I was like, okay, now I understand. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. You remember those people had to build a temple, not with bricks that we know. You remember we spoke about it? But they had to fetch big rocks. No machinery in those times. You see the big calling upon your life, people? Uh -huh, the big calling upon your life. Be strong. It's connected to three things. Be strong and courageous. Number one, he says to him, divide be strong and courageous, and you will have to divide the land. You see, being strong and courageous means you must do something. You cannot be strong and do nothing. <laughs> Imagine you are strong, but you do nothing. How would we know that you are strong? <laughs> eh? Eh? Strength is tested. You must do something. That's why James 1, 2 says, you must not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. So if you don't do the word of God, you won't be strong in the word of God. You understand, people? You won't be strong. And number two, he says, be strong and courageous and let the word of the Lord not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. That's why for us it's so much important, people. We read in the book of Joshua, one chapter every morning. Come on, one chapter every morning. Isn't that so nice? That you can just wake up, the first thing is not e-news, it's not YouTube, it's not Facebook. The first thing you do in the morning is what? The Bible. Amen. Why? Because he created you. He's the one that causes the sun to rise. Why must you run to YouTube as if they created the sun? <laughs> eh? You understand what we are saying, people? Eh? God causes the sun to rise for you, and you don't want to read the Bible. Why? <laughs> read! Because he loves you so much. We sang about he loves you so much. Reading the Bible is not a matter of time and tiredness. It's a matter of spending time with the one who loves you. Amen. And his love, his love endures forever. Yeah. Did you hear that? His love endures forever. Did you hear that, people? His love endures forever. I don't know what love do you want if you don't want the love of God. Because every love you will get in this world will finish. But the love of God will never end. Amen. Come on, church. Psalm 1910. <laughs> Again, we see, we see another scripture that says 1910. Remember last week we had a scripture that says 1910 in Revelation? You remember? That one that says the spirit of the Lord, uh, the testimony of, of Christ, the spirit of prophecy. Now we have another one, 1910. You see, 1910 is nice. It's a nice date, ne? Didn't the full gospel church start 1910 something? 
1910. Come on, guys. 1910. It says, um, your word is sweeter than honey. 1910. It must be more desired than silver. Think about it now. What do you want more than God? What do you want more than the word of God? 1910. Don't forget it now. You will remember it. Okay. And then the other one, verse 9, it says, do not, uh, be strong and courageous. And then he says, do not be afraid. <laughs> do not be afraid. And then I wrote there, face what you fear. <laughs> you, you, you want to deal with your fear? Anyone wants to deal with their fear? Does anyone want to deal with their fear? Face the fear. <laughs> face it. Uh, you see the dark block that I put there? Uh, when we arrived in Lesotho, it was around um, 7 o'clock in the evening. And then Mr. Nteso, we just get out of the taxi. He shows me lights. You know lights in the evening? It's about five kilometers away. He says, Pastor, that's where we are going. And we're going to walk through darkness and then a wilderness. We don't see anything. We don't, I don't even see the road. And then we walk in that day. Tell me about fear now. <laughs> and then he tells me, Pastor... Um, we, we still, we, we're going to walk an hour. I said, what? An hour? In the darkness, we don't see anyone. He says, don't worry, pastor. And then we got lost, even, he, he even got lost in the road. <laughs> I'm like, do you know where you are going? He says, yes, I know, pastor, let's go. <laughs> and as you walk, <laughs> and as you walk, the, the lights disappear because it's mountainous. Then you go down, then it becomes very dark. Then you have to go up, then the lights come. Then you go down again, you see? So that was fearful, really, it was fearful. But what was so nice, it was, it reminded me of Imagine Jacob, Abraham. They were also in the wilderness. They were also there. You remember? So, it's so it was so nice to see the Bible in action. And I was thinking that yeah, one day when I take people here, I also want them to come late and also walk in this darkness. <laughs> I wanted people to experience the same thing as well, that same fear. Because um, there was a guy who also came from uh, Zimbabwe who told us a story that one day in Zimbabwe in a village, uh, they were walking back home from a service, and it was night, and then they stepped on something very big, but they didn't know what that thing is, so, but they just walked. And then in, uh, uh, in the morning, they came back to look for what it was, and they saw a, like marks of a big snake. So they stepped on the snake and just passed because of it was very dark. You see? So that mind also came back, and then he said, no, don't worry, it's Lesotho. It's, it does, there's no snakes here. Because Lesotho is the coldest country in Africa. So it's very rare to see snakes there. Yeah. We hope so. <laughs> and the last part, obedience of the big calling. Imagine if all the people that had big callings in the Bible did not obey the calling. Imagine if Abraham, Genesis 12, when God told him, get out of your family, go to a place where I will show you. Imagine he didn't do that. I, I don't think we would have a, a nation of Israel today. And think of Paul. Eh? You, know, you know Paul, what happened to him? If Paul didn't obey the big calling, we wouldn't have any church today. <laughs> eh? Eh? Maybe the church would have been there in, in Israel alone. But because Paul went to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, to us. You see, he spread the gospel throughout. Imagine Joshua didn't obey the big calling upon his life. The children of Israelite wouldn't have been in the promised land. Imagine. You see the big calling upon your life? Imagine if you don't obey God for the big calling upon your life. Other people will not know the gospel because of other people can only be touched by you. You know other people that I don't know. Jesus Christ wants to use you to touch those people. You understand what I'm saying? You are from another community that I'm not from. That guy is from Brakpan. I'm not from Brakpan. But if he goes to Brakpan and preaches there, maybe they might listen to him. You understand what you're saying, people? We are in a world where every one of us is so important. You are so important. Do you know that? You are so important in God's eyes. That's why he died for you. And then he gives you a big calling to do something great with your life. Do you see that, church? Amen. Amen. I want to close off this afternoon with one person that changed the world. We call them the victorious Christians who obeyed the big calling. His name is Dr. 
David Livingston. I don't know if you know the Vic Falls, the Victoria Falls. Anyone who knows the Victoria Falls here? Amen. And when you are there, you are, you are amazed by the majestic, powerful water that comes running down so slowly. And as it runs down slowly, suddenly it goes fast down. And it goes down with power. And when it gets to the bottom, it splashes that it even touches further than you can ever imagine. Can you, can you imagine that? Maybe one day we must, we must go there so where we will see. But that place was discovered by Dr. David Livingston. And I want to read to you today, as I close off with this story, his life and his calling, how it was so big. But some people criticize him for this calling. But you will, you will also listen to how I also put my comment on his life as well. Can I read it to you yeah. as we close? Is it fine? Are you ready? Yeah. Listen to this story. David Livingston was a great missionary pioneer. A pathfinder with greatest desire was granted only after his death. The cessation of slave trade and opening up of Africa to Christianity and lawful commerce. So what he lived for was only accomplished after he, after he died. Can you imagine that? Because he was fighting for the, trade, for the slave trade in Africa. He grew up in a poverty-stricken home, but that encouraged him to read and memorize Psalm 119 at the age of nine. Imagine, at the age of nine, he could memorize this, the Psalms of 119. He worked in a spinning cotton factory at the age of 10 and simultaneously read books while he was working. You see, he's empowering himself while he's working. Dr. Livingston went on to study theology and medicine and reached the Robert Moffat Mission Station at Kuruman in March 1841. However, David Livingston's family could not adjust to the conditions of Africa and he sent them back to Britain after their fourth child died on the field which he received much criticism. So as, well, as he was in Africa, one of, the child, one of the children died and many people criticized him because of the people, his, people, his family died on the mission station. Mrs. Livingston also died of malaria when she came to visit her husband in his second great missionary expedition. So the wife, when they came to visit, also died. Huh? Many people will criticize him. Eh? Think of this. Initially, one can also criticize Dr. Livingston, but also one must carefully observe the motive that he did not bring his family to Africa to kill them. Do you think he came to Africa to kill his family? No. But to fulfill the calling of God upon his life. Jesus said, he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Did you hear that verse? He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So if is there anything that you love more than Christ, Now that, is, now, that is not a license to a dysfunctional and irresponsible parenting. It doesn't mean now parents must be dysfunctional and irresponsible. But an appeal from God not to worship any man but him. We can relate this life story to Abraham who sent Ishmael away. Not because he hated him, but because God had other plans for Ishmael. You remember that people, when God sent Ishmael, do you... Did, Ishmael, did, God, did Abraham want to send Ishmael away? Did Abraham want to send Ishmael away? You remember? It was hard. You remember? It was a hard thing to do. So if our families and position will be an excuse for us to do the work of God, then we would never go anywhere in the world and less would be done. You understand? This last paragraph. The Victoria Falls, one of the biggest... One of the biggest waterfalls in the world is one of the discoveries of Dr. Livingston. His life was a fulfillment of Matthew 19.29 that says, And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children of lands for my sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. 
Despite losing his family, he saved many other families from slave trade and war in Africa. And his life in inspired hundreds of missionaries like Mary Slessor, who ended the murdering of twins in Nigeria. I want to emphasize that his life is not a license for a responsible family life, but a response to the calling of God, no matter the cost, because even God had to separate from his son. Think about that. Even God had to separate from his son on the cross that the son can save many from their sins. Finally, there's so much growth in going away from your comfort zone. <laughs> Let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. I ask for big callings yes. upon each one's life here. As we read the book of Joshua, may each one see the big calling that they have in you, my King, to be disciples that will go and witness at their workplaces, witness, my king, at their families, witness, my king, in the streets, among their neighbors. Lord, we need children of God in every sphere of our lives, in the economy, in the businesses, Lord. We need the children of God in, for the Lord, governance, my king. Oh, Lord, we need the children of God everywhere in sports, my king. We need the children of God, my king, as fathers and mothers, Lord, as families who will lay down, who will lay down their lives for you, that you will get the glory. Lord, reveal the calling you have placed upon each one, that each one, Lord, will be, Father Lord, obedient to you, to the calling, that they will they will depend upon the promises you have placed upon their callings. And Lord Jesus Christ, that they, Father Lord, will listen to your command of the calling of being strong. I pray against the fear of Satan that wants to silence yes. people to do their work, yes. my King. I pray against the lie of Satan yes, that tells people Jesus, that they are nothing, they can do nothing. Yes. I rebuke Satan and all demonic in powers Jesus. in Jesus' wonderful Hallelujah. name that wants to steal, kill, and destroy the work of God in people's Amen. lives. I pray for each man sitting Lord, here today, each Father Lord woman sitting here, yes. each child, each young person, Lord, that they will know that in Christ they can do far more than what they ever think or imagine in Jesus Christ Hallelujah. we pray we thank you Lord and we give you all Jesus the glory and name. honor in Jesus amen. name amen and amen